Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at AstroPad, which is basically a program for iOS that turns your iPad Pro into a Cintiq. So here's what my setup looks like currently. I've got my iPad hooked up to the laptop, which is a 2013 uh, MacBook, MacBook Pro, and I'm using a lightning port connector, as you can see here. All right, so let's get into AstroPad, show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are within the iPad. As you can see, I can swipe my pen across. It's recording the screen. So what I want to do is scroll over and go into the AstroPad app. Now it says open AstroPad on your Mac. I'm gonna scroll over to the application icon in my Mac. And what is going on? Um, it's recording the screen recording so I need to hide this <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out because that that was kinda crazy alright so what you guys don't actually see on the iPad screen itself I'm gonna show you with uh, with my phone in just a second alright so now we're taking a look at this is what my laptop screen looks like and here we have the iPad screen itself as you can see it's mirroring exactly what's over there Although now we have this nifty little menu that gives you some common controls. As, a, as you can see, I can click and drag it from left to right. I can probably stack it, yep, vertically as well. I'm gonna keep it in the bottom right corner to keep it out of the way of everything. And then we have this other little button. I haven't really used it yet. Uh, it seems like it's more of a cropping thing because as soon as I press it here, you can see full screen, 100%, so you can probably um, lower so you can have a picture-in-picture picture thing going on anyways here you can see if I click and drag a purple arrow appears showing where my cursor is swiping and where it's tracking and as you can see as I do that there the laptop uh, screen Im uh, mimics that so it's weird about using AstroPad is there's no hover pen so unlike the Cintiq even if you get really close the pen will not move until you make contact with the screen and unfortunately like that's a weird thing to try and get used to but let's get into Photoshop and let's see how it feels when actually drawing so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop and the way that I'm gonna do that I'm gonna try to avoid using uh, the mouse itself as much as possible. I'm gonna click on my Adobe Apps uh, Creative Cloud thing up here. I'm gonna, I can't even scroll down just because of, just because of um, not having the secondary, not, not having like a right click option. So luckily Photoshop is right there. So I still, I feel like that's one of the biggest things pretty much holding this back is the navigation itself. If you guys see any sort of artifacting, I guess that's pretty normal too, just because we're not connected with a dedicated HDMI. Uh, but let's see how that affects, you know, drawing with a little bit of speed. I'm gonna have my hand on the keyboard. That's how I work on Photoshop, even with a Cintiq. But alternatively, you know, you could always just you go to these menus on on the right and um, and do everything click by click but I'll be using shortcuts like the B button to switch to a pen and then I'll use the parentheses to size up and size down the brushes so here let's start let's say we're drawing a character's head first let's take a quick look at how pressure sen sensitivity would work here so I'm, I'm pressing fairly lightly currently, but if I was to, to draw a couple of lines, here's a very light press, slightly harder, more of a medium press. Well, that one was pretty, pretty light as well. Here's a slightly harder press, and then one pressing almost as hard as I can press. As you can see, it does a fairly good job of pretty accurately portraying you know the the various uh, pressure levels that I'm applying as you can see if I was drawing and you know say I'm trying to go 
fairly quickly. I do see uh, the lag, but it, it doesn't, I wouldn't say that it completely hinders your ability to draw because you see that purple little trail. So you can sort of compensate for, oh, okay, this is, you know, exactly how, how far back, uh, how far delayed the input is. So in a way, uh, I think you can keep a reasonable speed and uh, do an all right, all right job. Now, admittedly, I haven't used AstroPad very long. This is already probably the longest I've used this app, just because when I originally hopped on, I was like, ah, I can't get used to these controls. Not having the keyboard right, you know, right where I want it, uh, it sort of makes it feel redundant that you have a laptop, which is already pretty portable, and then combining an iPad to it, and what are you actually gaining? And obviously, the thing that you're gaining is the ability to paint with pressure sensitivity as opposed to having to use your mouse trackpad. So here's like a little knight. Let's give him some sort of spear. I don't know, whatever. This is a random doodle. It's not, not the point of this. Uh, we're just trying to test out the tool and see how good it is. So a couple things to talk about, right? We have... While, while I test out stuff like um, increasing brush sizes, color selection. So a few things uh, that I did want to mention. AstroPad costs $30, which, you know, is very pricey for an app itself. But in hindsight, realistically, it's not too bad. For a program that's one-time purchase, which turns your, you know, tablet into something say even remotely close to a Cintiq is kind of a bargain and uh, that's why I didn't I don't feel too bad uh, spending the money even if I might not get a lot of mileage out of this app I think uh, it's pretty nice that I can review it and uh, tell you guys what it's capable of because realistically you know this might be really good for some people so here I am zooming in I don't know how to pan the view if I click and hold control with my finger while while putting the mouse down, that doesn't do it. Options zooms out. Command press. Oh, there we go. Okay, so using those four little keys at the bottom, if I click with um, click and hold the command key with one of my fingers, and then as I point and drag the pen around the screen, I'm able to. Uh, move around the canvas so that's that's not too bad I, I think it feels you know obviously I can click the command key on the keyboard where my hands are near <laughs> where my hands are resting so that I don't have to use the keys that you see on the iPad but knowing that it works uh, alongside with it also pretty nice so one one of the things I already thought about that could potentially uh, help your experience if let's say you just can't afford a Cintiq and you you know you're forced to work on a little bit of Photoshop stuff but you have no alternative for your iPad Pro you bought an iPad Pro you're drawing with it and you're like oh no now I need to touch up some stuff I want to try drawing in Photoshop or I need to finish this up one of the things that I, I think might work well for for people is to get a Bluetooth keyboard now, I understand that you're already connected to a laptop and the Bluetooth keyboard is just another device that's going to be on your desk. But realistically, drawing on the go is you know, better suited for things like the iPad Pro itself, not really a Cintiq, because a Cintiq, Cintiq is a monitor, right? So I think it, it's, it seems pretty fair to consider investing into a Bluetooth keyboard, some sort of Apple one that, you know, works with all the command keys and everything, and having that connect to your laptop, not to your iPad, and putting it in a very comfortable place for you. Let's say your laptop's a little bit out of reach. You know, your desk is small and you need to uh, move it over and keep the iPad like to the far left of your laptop. And I think that's a pretty great way of compromising between those two things. All right, so now, I don't know if by now you've noticed that every once in a while, the screen will, the screen will tear 
especially if I'm moving the device, uh, if I'm moving around visual elements slowly, because it needs to update the tracking, the mirroring. And I thought it would be more annoying than it is, but it's not too bad. It would probably be really bad if you were working on, say, an animation. And that's actually one of the pretty exciting, exciting things is that having AstroPad installed like this might allow me to comfortably work on whatever animating app I want even in bed because I can have the laptop laying on the bed next to me and then I can go in with the Bluetooth keyboard and I can have uh, you know my iPad on my lap or on my stomach while I'm laying down and just working away at some animations so that's pretty neat uh, overall I think I think I'm I'm kind of a fan of this I'm just not sure that um, I'll use it you know professionally maybe maybe if I ever you know find myself going on a trip I can consider leaving this antique behind not even grabbing the uh, Intuos and just bringing my iPad and a cable it's a lot less stuff but I think it could even get the job done and have, not having that hover pen is really strange I must say Switching between brushes and stuff, I, I feel like is something that uh, I can just get more used to. So I'm not faulting the product for that. It's more of like my inexperience and inability to do it proficiently for now. And uh, another thing that I did want to quickly talk about is the single price of $30 is for the app version of Astropad, but they also have a subscription based thing for some more high tech one. And I remember reading the email and it said something about the reason that it's subscription based is so that they can keep working on providing a better app, not to get rich off of their customers, which in all honesty makes a lot of sense. I just don't know how I can justify. Um, having a subscription for something that you know isn't a designer's tool I now I understand that you know if you don't have a Cintiq you only have the iPad Pro and you are relying on something like AstroPad to get work done I can see why that's that's not a bad thing like why you would uh, potentially even subs subscribe to them uh, it's just I'm not sure if that's something that I'm interested in. Now what do you get with the subscription? Well they give you a more updated program, a beefed up super edition of AstroPad. Supposedly a three times more efficient uh, liquid engine which is what this uses to mirror whatever effect we have going on and um, some other stuff that I, I don't even remember uh, but I thought that the biggest highlight was the liquid engine so maybe that's something that'll trickle down to the people that did invest into the $30 one-time purchase but I'm not sure I, I I don't think I'll be sad either way this works uh, decently well for the the price you know the initial cost of the app if you think about it you know $30 is what it's like a lunch for two at a restaurant not too bad I did want to finally talk about one more thing before we kind of end the video and that was the future of AstroPad and how I think this is unless uh, there is some sort of shift in what what sort of uh, things the app does I don't really see it sticking around for too long because it only makes sense for companies like Apple or uh, you know any other tablet related businesses to make it so that all their devices work very um, fluidly with one another so I think realistically a, a generation or two from now iPads are gonna have this whole mirroring thing built in and it's gonna be very very uh, painless to have perfect Cintiq-esque abilities to mirror whatever you're drawing on your iPad 
and have it show up on your laptop or desktop that you've plugged it into. So I'm a little bit concerned with uh, the idea itself. It seems solid, but it's one of those things that big companies just kind of come in and, oh yeah, I see you're building you know, something, there's interest in this, so let's just go ahead and improve on it because we have the budget, we have uh, the, our, the research and development uh, to make something like this work really well and they'll probably do that so I don't know <laughs> that was just like another thought I had maybe that's just me being like really um, negative I'm not trying to be negative I'm just I'm just saying how it is it's great that these guys are doing something and you know they're they're getting uh, great support from a lot of a lot of fans that obviously fi found good use for an app like this let's see how a movie uh, looks on Astropad. We may even try a game, but drawing really quick. Here you could see it's keeping up quite well. Just a little bit behind, but yeah, let's close this and let's pop open an animation or something along those lines. Here we have. Let's do one of my Cosmic Commandos that uh, that I I'm pretty sure I've already showcased. So I'm trying to double tap. All right, let's see preview. All right, let's see how the artifacting looks when trying to watch a video. Already a little bit blurrier than the laptop screen itself. Yeah, the text is not as crisp. And it basically seems like it's just slightly lower resolution. Not that the video itself was done in super high detail. But it's capturing it fairly well. Like I, I, I can understand everything that's going on. I don't know if the music will be too loud. Oh, it's so weird. Even the, even the UI uh, box in the middle has um, has pixels everywhere. But again, not too bad. All things considered. I gotta finish this animation. It was so much fun to work on. Oh, there was some lag. It looked like it struggled there a little bit. Yeah, very, very fast movements end up being kind of boxy. Alright, not bad. Let's close that. Uh, I don't think it's worth opening up a game. We kind of, we kind of saw what we saw. Uh, I think a video is very similar to a game, right? If you have a lot of things moving, stuff's gonna get choppy. Alright guys, that was a quick look and first impression of Astropad. As I said, $30 on iOS. Not too bad if all you have is an iPad and you still really want some sort of device that you can uh, you know, connect, connect to your MacBook or iMac. I, I think I have to mention that I'm almost fairly certain this does not work on PCs. This does not work with Windows. This is Apple exclusive stuff. If you have a PC, uh, I don't know what other alternatives there are. Just keep that in mind. Overall, the app is not too bad. I might revisit it, might do a little challenge, you know, painting with just AstroPad and see what sort of results I can get or if it's, you know, just as easy as regular Photoshop and Cintiq combo. Uh, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions that I maybe things I missed or if I messed up some sort of info, uh, be sure to correct me in the comments. Uh, let me know what other sort of stuff you want to see. I have a few vi uh, ideas for videos. I just sometimes forget you know, to sit down and do a video for you. But I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, as always, stay beautiful.